NFT drops often have thousands of images, but each one isn't drawn individually. They're built up of layers of traits, which stack up to form the image. There are many free NFT artwork generators out there, but Jang.js is mine, and I built it to provide a more expressive, expandable script for developers and artists. My name is James Puccini, and on this channel I create content about digital assets and blockchain development. Consider subscribing and please hit the like button for YouTube algorithm. Most of the NFT generators that I looked at online are very simple to use and you just put all your images into a certain directory structure and the NFT metadata and the images will be automatically generated using the directory structure as a base. While that's great for simplicity and particularly for non-developers, what I wanted was something that anyone with a little bit of JavaScript experience can then kind of take that a step further and start customizing the logic within the image generation. This means that developers might want to do more, they might want to make certain traits more rare or match one trait type to another or provide a specific trait to a certain NFT ID. This is really easy to set up. All you'll need is Node.js running on your computer, which you can get from Node.js.org if you don't have that already. Then you need a little bit of JavaScript experience and a text editor just to go in and modify the config file. And then you can just npm install to install the dependencies and then run the script. Profile picture NFTs are generally made up of different layers and then variations on each layer. So for example, if you want 10,000 unique images, you'd need five or six different layers and then five or six different variations of each layer. And that'll give you the 10,000 unique images by mixing and matching them in unique ways. So in this directory structure here, we've got different backgrounds, characters, eyes and mouths. If we go into eyes category, we can see what blue, brown or green eyes. So we can mix and match these traits to create different variations. If I go back and open up template.svg, you can see there's more than a slight nod here to Austin Griffiths' Loogies. And what I'm doing is I've created this artwork, if we can call it that. But then if I hide different layers and I just leave the eyes, I can export this as a ping image and that will be a, have a transparent background so it can be stacked on top of each other to form the actual NFT itself. The Jang.js script actually does the legwork here and it takes all them layers and puts them together and then compresses the image. The software that I'm using here is called Inkscape. It's a vector editing program that's free and open source that I'm a big fan of. But if you're more familiar with something like Photoshop, then by all means use that. And in pretty much any image editing software, you can create an image out of different layers, isolate them layers, and then export each layer individually as a transparent ping image to create the different variations for layers in your NFT. The Jang.ds script then does all the legwork of putting them images together on top of each other and then creating the metadata as well to go alongside it. So let's run through the script itself now. To start with, we import some libraries. Then we've got some basic parameters that the user is going to want to customize. We have the project name, the project description, the project URL. We've got a supply, which is the total number of NFTs that you're going to want to generate. And then we've got an image size, which for this we're using 500 by 512 pixels. We then define the input and the output directory. Then we're straight into this draw image function, which we can use to build up the layers for our image. Now there's lots of different ways for doing this and there's a load of examples on the GitHub readme page. So the way we add a layer is we use the add layer function with the directory and then the file name minus the dot ping at the end. And then we just pass through the CTX, which is the canvas file to add that to. Here's some examples of how we can do that. We can put all the file names into an array and then select one at random. This will use a random background that will change every time you generate the NFT series. We can also do things like generating playing cards. And this is really useful as well because you can do this within the smart contracts. So you can derive a playing card from the NFT ID. So you can add extra functionality to your smart contract that way. We can create custom rarities with some randomness. Uh, so if math.random, which is a number between 0 and 1, is greater than 0.7, then the character will be Jill. So 30% of the characters will be Jill. And then if math.random is greater than 0.99, the random character will be James. So James will be much rarer than Jill and Jill will be much rarer than Jack. We can also create really rare one-offs. So if, for example, we want a alien, but we only want one of them in the whole collection, we can do that like this. We can also add specific traits to specific IDs. So for example, if we want the NF if the NFT ID includes a 420 in the number, then we can have the mouth of smoking. We can also add numeric attributes without adding an image layer. So you might not have strength, intelligence, or give our NFTs certain character properties without adding an image to that. So that's possible. And we can also add images without adding attributes. 
Really what this provides is a simple way for a developer to kind of have an NFT script and not doing a lot of the things behind the scenes, but then make it simple for them to be able to express themselves and do different things with their NFT collection and pro start programming that and adding more complexities and more interesting things rather than just 10,000 random images. So once we've got that script in place and we've added all our layers, we can run the script by just using node jang.js. Let's run that and you'll see it starts to print out the different NFTs. You're probably gonna to wanna to run this overnight. It's definitely not built for speed. If we go into the directory structure now, we can see an output file and we can go to HD images and you've got your example NFT. If we're going to output metadata, you can open any one of these files. And you see this JSON file has all the data you'd need for this to be compatible with something like OpenSea or any other NFT third party platform. So what are the next steps for doing an NFT drop? We then want to take the images of this output and the metadata and upload that probably to a decentralized file system such as IPFS. There's a couple of tools you can use for this. One is nft.storage. This requires a little bit of programming knowledge. Or the other one, which is just like a cloud user platform is pinata.cloud. Either of these tools will enable you to upload the images to IPFS. We then need to think about the smart contract. The main option you have with building a smart contract is whether to use an ERC721 or an ERC1155 contract. For something simple like profile pictures, I'd say just use an ERC721 contract because that's known, it's slightly simpler. If you're doing anything more complex like having different items or different NFT types, then ERC1155 is a little bit more complex but adds a lot of more functionality to working with different types of fungible and non-fungible tokens. Both of these have fantastic templates on Open Zeppelin. You can compile, test, and deploy the contracts using something like Remix or Hardhat, and that will deploy the contract to the blockchain, which will then link to your files on IPFS. While that's outside the scope of this tutorial, I'll be sure to cover it in a later video. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you're interested in digital assets and DeFi, then consider subscribing to the channel. Please hit the like button for YouTube algorithm, and thank you for watching.